Hello, I'm Dr. John Cruz, and today I'm going to be talking about Five Ants and why it's so popular. I hope I'm not having problems with the sound, which has plagued some of the past videos, but I plan on talking about 20 minutes. If you have questions while I'm talking, you can certainly type them in. This will be posted on YouTube and Facebook afterwards. So I've been starting with the take-home message. The take-home message is Five Ants is so popular because it's both a good product and because it was aggressively marketed. So what is that product? So the product, Five Ants, it's generic name and it's not available yet as a generic, is Lys Dex Amphetamine. Um, and that name, the Lys, refers to lysine which is an amino acid that is chemically linked to the dextroamphetamine molecule. So this is what's called a prodrug. Lysdexamphetamine itself is not biologically active. The lysine needs to be cleaved off of the dextroamphetamine for the dextroamphetamine to be there and work as other stimulants do. And that cleavage occurs by red blood cells once the substance is into your bloodstream. Um, so normal usage, you swallow the capsule. They also have a chewable capsule now, or chewable tablet now. Um, you swallow it, it gets absorbed through your gastrointestinal system. It's still an inactive prodrug. Um, unlike amphetamine, dextro, or dextroamphetamine, or Adderall combinations of dextro and levoamphetamine, which stomach acidity has a moderately large role in terms of how quickly it's absorbed. With the Lysdexamphetamine molecule, the Vyvanse molecule, um, gastric pH does not have much effect on what, how, how quickly it's absorbed. But again, absorption for this drug is not the major issue. Um, you can absorb it all you want, it, you still don't have any active drug. So it's absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract into your bloodstream. And then red blood cells cleave off the lysine, which is an amino acid. It's part of any protein, animal source protein you're eating. Um, and your body uses it to build back new proteins. Um, so that's a natural substance, non-toxic, and then it's the other part of that molecule is the dextroamphetamine molecule, which then can go act on dopaminergic and noradrenergic cells in your brain and in your body. So a um, couple things about that. Because it's a prodrug, that means in 100 milligrams of Vyvanse, you do not have 100 milligrams of the active dextroamphetamine, you have substantially less of that because of the size of the lysine molecule is considerably bigger. So it's about a third. So in 30 milligrams of Vyvanse, 30 milligrams of Vyvanse is roughly equivalent to 9 milligrams of pure dextroamphetamine. So about a 3 to 1 ratio, um, a little more than that. Or it's about equivalent to 12 milligrams of Adderall products. Um, and I'll get to in a moment. Adderall is a combination, a 3 to 1 ratio of dextroamphetamine to levoamphetamine because the levoamphetamine is both overall less active and specifically less active on norepinephrine. That's why we get the Adderall is not exactly equivalent to this, the strength of dex, dextroamphetamine. It's less strong. So about, so, so again, if you were taking about 30 milligrams of Adderall XR a day, you do not want to jump to 30 milligrams of Vyvanse. Um, you're going to be going to something close to 90 milligrams of Vyvanse to get the same effect. So a couple things about the... So this drug was designed, at least all the evidence I have, I haven't found it in writing, but I talked to both people involved in its development at the time and many psychopharmacologists since then, it was designed almost entirely to make it resistant to drug abuse. Um, that was the goal. They, they did want a long, slow release form of it, but sort of inadvertently they created an ideal 
pharmacokinetic profile or profile how the drug is released over time that works ideally for many people. So again, the primary goal was just to make this something that couldn't be abused. So I talked about the normal mode, you ingest a pill, it needs to be absorbed and it's in your bloodstream. And because the red blood cells don't have the capacity to cleave it all instantly, they are cleaving and releasing dextroamphetamine throughout the day. I mean, more of it's cleaved initially. Um, so the, the common profile of action is it takes an hour or two, often closer to two before it's having substantial effect. And then it's delivering and releasing measurable amounts of dextroamphetamine throughout the day up to, and most people have effects for about 14 hours after they took the pill. Um, so about, again, 12 hours of active use. That doesn't mean it's as potent at the 14th hour as it was at hour two, three, or four, but still measurable amounts are still there. And patient-wise, the comment or description I have, particularly in comparison to Adderall XR or other Adderall slow-release products or other problem, or using combinations of immediate release pills, what people say for Vyvanse is smooth. So again, relying on those red blood cells to cleave it off and they have a reduced capacity, they're not cleaving it all off and freeing dextroamphetamine instantly throughout the, I mean, the whole amount that's exposed to them. It's a slow release mechanism that again, they weren't designing it to be optimally delivered throughout the day, but many experts and many patients say this is pretty darn close to optimal delivery mechanism through cleavage. So what happens if you snort it? What happens if you inject it? What happens if you do other things? Again, unlike if you injected, snorted, straight amphetamine, dextro or L or the combination thereof, or, or methamphetamine, where you get pretty instantaneously hit so as soon as that molecule is there and available, using those different abuse methods to take your pill, again, you are still constrained by the red blood cells needing to cleave it off. Almost all of the both laboratory data on rodents or human in the lab data again suggest giving this through other means doesn't give much of a immediate boost. Um, I've heard anecdotal reports that there are some people whose nasal passageways or others may be able to cleave some of the lysine from the dextroamphetamine and allow some subjective hit early on. Um, the very few patients I've talked to who have tried illicit methods of delivery have not experienced that. And a huge body of literature would suggest that that's likely to only get a small hit. So again, I, I think it was very well designed to reduce drug abuse by these methods. And again, it's giving for many people an ideal profile. So a little um, diversion into one other aspect of this, again, why it's different than Adderall. So Adderall is an equal mixture of racemic dextro and levoamphetamine and dextroamphetamine. So that, that that's horribly put. Um, but what winds up, so, dex, so Adderall is a three to one ratio of these two L's and the three to one, because again, it's they're equally mixing an equal mixture, which is half and half and a pure mixture of dextroamphetamine. Um, so dextro and levoamphetamine do have, they are again, mirror images of each other. They are stereoisomers. They don't have identical effects on the body. Um, the levoamphetamine, which is less potent, is markedly less potent, has very little norepinephrine effect. It's a good dopamine effect. Um, dextroamphetamine has both a good norepinephrine and a dopamine effect. The levo, the weaker of the two, does act to have a half-life that lasts around a little longer. And the levo form, the less potent form, um, has stronger effects on the peripheral body and particularly on cardiovascular effects, so you're more likely to have increased blood pressure, increased heart rate from that levo effect. Um, the dextro effect is more specific for the central nervous system. So people who take pure dexedrine are, again, are 
less likely to have some of the cardiovascular side effects. Um, and at least in laboratory situations and some human data, the D form of this amphetamine molecule is effective for, with ADD, impulsive symptoms, attention symptoms, and overactivity symptoms, where the levo form seems more specific for attentional symptoms. So again, we do have pure forms of um, dextroamphetamine available as dexedrine, as dextroamphet generic dextroamphetamine, as dextroamphetamine spantules or long release form, and Vivendi is a form just of dextroamphetamine. Right now, there's an increasing number of um, products that combine D and L forms like Adderall does, like Adderall XR does, and um, including Adhansia, Ibikio, and a few others. Um, many of them are touting that they're particularly wonderful because they tweak, tweak the ratio in a slightly different way. Um, I have failed to see major differences in these new formulations. They seem to me largely marketing techniques. So we'll get onto that. So again, because of its mode of delivery, because of the pro-drug delivery, the Vivance tends to deliver very smoothly a beneficial hit of stimulant medication throughout the day and a pretty full robust day of usually 12 hours for most individuals. Um, two other things, so, so part of what stimulants are doing, dextro or levo, or particularly dextroamphetamine in the brain, it is both a norepinephrine and dopamine reuptake blocker, so it allows dopamine or norepinephrine to be used for a longer period of time, and it's working on the, what's called the VMAT, VMAT, vesicular monoamine trans, um, order system to actually force release from vesicles in the presynaptic terminal so it's releasing more stimulant than would normally be released. So unlike a simple reuptake inhibitor like Stratera, which is a norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor, which is just helping you make more longer use of what's available, these stimulants and, and some of the street stimulants also are causing release of, forcing the vesicles to release what's there. So they are giving a bigger release or hit. The evidence to date suggests that yes, at massive doses of such action, um, there may be damaging effects, but in the therapeutic range, more than 30 different studies have shown that kids exposed long time to the stimulants, kids who have ADHD, at the end of adolescence or early adulthood have brains that look more normal after long-term exposure to stimulant medication. So again, there may be risks from excessive use, there may be risks from illicit um, stimulants which may have greater excessive release of dopamine or norepinephrine, but again the stimulants, the prescription ones themselves in the therapeutic range actually seem to have beneficial effects, at least correlated with brains that look more normal at the end of years of treatment through childhood. So when I've mentioned that Vyvanse is popular, and I thought a year ago I found more recent data, I had a really hard time finding anything much more recent than, than some global pictures. So, so globally, in 2020, on the last full year we have data, Vivance in US dollars, again, these are worldwide sales, more than $2.5 billion of Vivance was sold. That's a huge, a lot of money. Um, so Vivance for years was produced and marketed by Shire Pharmaceuticals. Um, they received their patent FDA approval in about 2007 and were on the market by early 2008. Um, Shire was taken over by Takeda, a Japanese pharmaceutical company in 2019. Um, Vivance is still only available as a name brand product. Um, its patent is expected to expire in 2023. Um, in the US, it's approved for ADHD in kids through adults, so age six and up. It's also approved in adults for 
um, binge eating disorder, and I won't say too much more about that. Um, so within a less than a decade of its introduction into the US market, so by 2015, um, pharmaceutical market analysis suggested that it captured more than 32% of the US stimulant market, um, which is a huge share, and it's a huge share, particularly again, given its cost. So I looked at GoodRx to get um, data on prices in my area, and these are pretty similar across the country from what I've seen and correlate with what patients report. So if you had to pay out of pocket for Vyvanse, um, you're gonna be paying close to $400 regardless of the dosage for a for single pill a day of Vyvanse. With unload, online coupons, um, you're only gonna be able to, to reduce that cost by about $50 with, with one exception I'll mention. Um, so, that, so cost for Vyvanse is gonna be more than $10 a day if you had to pay out of pocket. So in the past, both Shire and Takeda had um, manufacturer's coupons, which often reduced out-of-pocket costs in the first month or two. Most of these were geared towards people who did have insurance. Um, and usually the coupons are helping reduce a copay, if you have a copay with that, or if you're in the deductible. But again, for most, unless your insurance covers it, and many do right now, um, but otherwise, you're spending more than 10 bucks a day on Vyvanse. In contrast, Adderall, which is available as generics, um, is about 20 to $50 for a month's prescription. And with online coupons, which are readily available to anyone, these are not manufacturer's coupons, anyone can download them, brings that down to almost any pharmacy. You should be able to get you know, about a month's worth of Adderall might depend on the dose or if you're taking multiple pills, about $20 for the month. So in two days, you are paying out what would cost an entire month's worth of Vyvanse. Um, maybe a more direct comparison is Dexedrine sustained release. So Dexedrine spansels, and, and that's available as a generic. Um, without any coupons, without, is, it costs about $150 to $200 for a month's worth. That's half the cost of Vyvanse, but pretty universally, there are easily available downloadable coupons that bring that to the 25 to 30 bucks a month range. Again, a tenth or less than a tenth of what Vyvanse is costing. So Vyvanse shot to a third of market share for stimulants. Um, within less than a decade of its introduction, despite the fact that it's costing substantially more either to insurers or to individuals paying out of pocket for it. Oh, so again, why did that happen? It happened, I would argue, because it was a particularly well-designed product. It works very well for a lot of people. It's not ideal for everyone. Some people um, particularly can't handle the slower delay of slower eye slower onset, the greater delay at the onset of efficacy. Um, but usually it's been cost concerns that I've had people who, like Vyvanse, didn't continue with it. Um, so for some people with insurance, it is a higher copay, um, particularly in the first decade of its availability. There was more pushback in terms of insurers covering it. Sometimes they still have a tiered system where they require that you've tried Adderall or Ritalin or a generic form of either or both before they will approve Vyvanse, but pretty routinely they will if you've done that. Um, so separate from being a good product, um, studies have shown that of the stimulants, Vyvanse was one of the most heavily marketed um, studies done in the US. And this was marketed both to psychiatrists and pediatricians who are the main um, administrators or prescribers for stimulant medications for kids and adults with ADHD. And they did very aggressively market it to that population. Um, there was again another marketing blitz around 2015 when it was approved for a binge eating disorder. My Disclosure, which I probably should have made at the beginning, is I did go to 
In the past, I had met with um, sales representatives from Shire and Takeda. Um, I have received coupons to pass on to patients to get them discounted prices early on. I've gone to industry-sponsored dinners, none in the last three years, so I have, I'm not receiving any kickback marketing benefit. I'm talking about it now because it works well for patients. That's about all I have to say. And if you have questions, it's fine to post them here or later. Um, I'm seeing a reaction, but no comments. So next week, I'm going to be talking about a much broader topic, just what good are emotions? Stay safe, stay well, avoid scammers and shooters, and have a good week.